Lift your hands up high as if a child reaching up to his father or her father. Come on, reach, 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 reach to him. God's word promises if we draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to us. Feel the arms of the father wrap around your life this morning as he tells you, I love you completely, absolutely perfectly. 
Father, we just, we embrace you. We love you. You are awesome. We're your children and you're our heavenly father and we cry Abba to you today. Daddy, Papa, our father, which art in heaven, your name is holy and we love you and we revere you, but we thank you for your love. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. Come on, give God praise in this place. Come on, come on. Lift up a shout to him. Today we have with us a very special guest. I know you're gonna enjoy the ministry that happens over the next few moments from this stage. Sharon Witten is the co-pastor of Toronto City Church with her husband, Brendan. Toronto City Church is an intercultural, intergenerational church with a passion to impact the city of Toronto and the nation of Canada. Sharon serves in a number of organizations and movements, including the Canadian Leaders Prophetic Network, Ministers Network Canada, and she is the next-gen North American Regional Co-Chair for Empowered 21. She also sits on the board of I Am Compelled, an educational charity, and Culture Changers, a nonprofit organization that focuses on tackling critical cultural issues that affect the church and the next generation. Sharon's passions include empowering women, raising next generation leaders, and seeing believers grow in the prophetic. She and Brendan have two awesome kids, Micah and Shiloh. We are delighted to have from way up north all the way to Tulsa, Oklahoma today, Sharon Witten. Would you stand up and welcome her to ORU? Good morning. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, ORU. I see you. <laughs> How are you this morning? You guys all right? How many freshmen do I have in the house this morning? All right, how many sophomores, is that what y'all call it here in America, sophomores or the next thing? How many sophomores do I have? How many juniors do I have in the building? <laughs> how many seniors do I have in the building? I'm so excited to be here all the way from Toronto, Canada. I'm glad to be with you. How many Canadians are on campus? Oh no, okay. We gotta get more Canadians down here. Well, I'm excited. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Dr. Wilson, thank you so much for having me. It is a delight to be here. This is my first time at ORU. I have never been here before. And as Dr. Wilson said, I come from Toronto, I am married, I have two amazing children, Micah and Shiloh, a 14-year-old and a 10-year-old. Come on, I know that I don't look that old, you know, with my 14-year-old who just started high school and my delightful daughter, Shiloh, who is 10. Well, this morning, I want us to pray. I really felt like as I was praying for you guys this morning, and it kind of got confirmed for me in the, in the pre-chapel meeting that the Lord is doing something unique on this campus. I have never been to Tulsa, I have never been to ORU, but there are some things that the Lord was speaking to me about you all and about what the Lord is getting ready to do in this place. So I want you to do this for me. I want, to make, I want you to make sure that you are awake. I want you to just tap the side of your head, make sure your battery is functioning properly. I want you to look to the person next to you and say, are you awake and ready? And then I want you to turn to the person on the other side and say, come on, let's get ready. Let's pray this morning. I want you to quiet your heart and I want you to fix your attention on the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been singing about him. He is worthy of our attention and our devotion. He is the king exalted. 
Father, this morning we are gathered today to bring glory to your name. Father, I thank you for each one that is sitting in this room. Though there are many, Father, you see each and every one of us individually. In fact, you are well acquainted with all that is going on in our lives. And Father, this morning, I pray that you would revolutionize how we see you. I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to come to each student this morning. Father, where each one is sitting in this auditorium, God, I pray that you would speak to them as I am speaking. Holy Spirit, that you would bring a word to each one that changes their heart and their life. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Amen. Well, a couple of things. The, the title of my message to you this morning, this is what the Lord gave me. I was actually um, preparing, I've been preparing praying and preparing for this, and I was at an Empower 21 meeting in Dallas just um, a few days ago, um, or actually last week, and often the Lord will speak to me through object lessons. It's just the way the Lord and I interact. I'll read the word, study the word, I'll go into times of prayer and fasting, and the Lord will speak to me on, in day-to-day -day things. And I began to, you know, one of, I was with one of my teammates, uh, we were leaving Dallas, one of the Canadians that had traveled with me, and I, we were hungry and we were trying to find something to eat, or we weren't leaving, sorry, we had just arrived and we had spent the day at church. And how many people know that Chick-fil-A does not open on a Sunday? I mean, we love that company, but I was like, y'all need to open on a Sunday because we don't have Chick-fil-A in Canada except for two locations. So we wanted to go to Chick-fil-A, but we went to another burger joint called Five Guys. Okay, all right. I mean, they're better than In-N-Out, but anyways, it, it, I could, I just, I, I can't, I can't. Sorry, sorry. So we went to Five Guys and I got a five guy, and we have five guys in Canada, and I got a burger and I got a fries, and by the time I hit my vehicle, the bottom of the bag was full of grease and oil. I'm talking oily burger. Like the thing was greasing out the bottom of my bag. So I was like, ooh, that's nasty. And then I just went ahead and I ate the sandwich. <laughs> then I went to Target and I bought a little jumper for my girl and I bought a little hair oil um, and I put them in a bag and unbeknownst to me, I got home uh, later on in the trip, I got home and the oil had spilt out all over this jumper. And I was like, my little girl was so excited, but how many people know that oil is hard to get out of clothing? So the oil had spilled out in this jumper and so I was kind of like, okay, there's oiliness, oiliness, God, what are you talking to me about? And the Lord started to speak to me about what he is doing here at ORU, and he gave me this title for this short message that I'm going to encourage you guys with today. He said, tell them to stay oily. That's what the Lord said to me. He said, tell them to stay oily. And then the Lord brought me back to an experience in my childhood where I was one of these kids, I was a Canadian kid, I was born in Canada, grew up in a West Indian home, and back in the day, it was very popular to have a jerry curl. Does anybody know what a jerry curl is? This generation, y'all looking at me like you don't know. It was a greasy, oily hairstyle that a lot of black people wore that had a lot of grease, and anytime you laid up against a couch or a sofa, it left a mark. Every time someone ran their, hair, their hand through your hair, they would walk away with a handful of grease. Right? Like the jerry curl. It was cute, but it was greasy. And the Lord began to speak to me about this topic of staying oily and about how oil leaves a mark. And about how, you know, I don't know about you, but my whole entire life, I grew up in such a way that I did not want to live a mediocre life before God. I grew up in such a way where I knew, even from my childhood, that I was called to leave a mark. I had an understanding that me plus Jesus had the potential and the capacity for global impact. I just grew up that way. And I felt like, okay, God, you know, as a kid, I wanted to leave a mark. In fact, I was so enamored, and to this day, I'm, I'm yet enamored by people who do great things. You know, I'm enamored by men and women like Billy Graham, who has so many people, who won so many people to Jesus. You know, another guy, you know, Elon Musk. How many people know Elon Musk? Okay, y'all are clapping more for him than you were for Billy Graham. 
Elon Musk, you know, SpaceX and all the advancements of technology. I am so enamored by these amazing people that left a mark on culture and society. But how many people know there is a difference? You can be exceptionally talented. I know many of you are. You're gifted, you're talented. You could be the next Elon Musk. And in fact, I really feel like the Lord is raising up a generation of pioneers that will plow new territory. That's you. Turn to somebody and say, that's you. God is doing it. But how many people know, even though you can be exceptionally talented, there is something different about just being talented versus carrying oil, the anointing. Don't get me wrong, you are here to get an education, to, to steward the craft that God has called you to, but there is something that is distinguishedly different on the believer, and that is the presence of Jesus. What distinguishes us among all of society, the distinguishing mark of the believer is the presence of God. So there is a, when you carry what God has called you to carry and to steward your life well, and where you carry the oil of intimacy with Jesus, you have the ability and the capacity to leave a significant mark on planet Earth. And God is wanting to release his oily ones to his planet. So turn to somebody and say, you're about to become more oily. You're about to get greasy. You know, some of you, you just came out of your teenage years and you're like, I just, you know, I was having pimples all across my face. You were about to get more oily, okay? Now, oil in the Bible represents the activity of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. It's a metaphor for the Holy Spirit who brings us revelation of the Word of God and power for ministry. In fact, I love this character in the Bible in John 5. 35, it says that John, John the Baptist, was a blazing and burning torch. And for a short time, you basked in his light with great joy. He was a burning torch. God has called you as students. It doesn't matter what you look like, who you are. If you are a believer, God has called you to be a burning, blazing torch. And that is why you have chosen to come here. You have chosen to come here to educate yourself, but you've also chosen to come here to be empowered by the Spirit of God, to be a burning and a shining lamp across the globe. You have signed up for school. You have signed up for a post-secondary education, but you have also signed up for the school of the Spirit. And the Spirit of God is going to work in and on you. Luke 12, 35, it says, stay ready for action and keep your lamp burning. All believers should have a lamp that is burning. That's the supernatural life of God flowing through your life. When you, when you look at that whole concept of a lamp, it's your external life in the kingdom, how you carry God, how you move and how you are in society. And each and every one of us should carry revelation for our day that impacts your culture. You should carry something in God. You should encounter God and God downloads wisdom and innovation and creativity to impact this generation. That is why you are here. That is why you are sucking air on planet earth. That is why this day has come that the Lord is saying, I have need of you. In fact, the word says, who will volunteer in the day of his power? We are in a day where God is pouring out his spirit and he's looking for each and every one of us to say, pick me, I'll do it and I'll go. And in our daily communion with God, we begin to fill our flask of oil. A flask is like an old school word, but it's like our joy jar of oil. As we commune with him, as we spend time in prayer, as we spend time in worship, you guys have something going on here in worship that has global impact. I was saying to Augustine and Ali as they drove, I said, you know, give me the culture. What's the culture of, of the school? Because I was praying for you all and I kept hearing songs of deliverance, songs of deliverance, songs of deliverance that the Lord is raising up psalmists out of this school that will carry melodies for the nation that break down certain structures and set people free. 
So if you are a psalmist, if you sing and if you write, be prepared for a move of the Spirit of God in your writing. Be prepared to wake up in the night hour and have lyrics drop on your heart as you worship him. I also heard the Lord say that he is bringing songs that bring the redeemed of the Lord to their feet in utter surrender. I saw an altar full of people just crying out in desperation the words of the songs that you sing that draw your heart in close proximity to God. I felt like the Lord wanted to do something so unique here because the desire of the enemy, this is the desire of the enemy, is to keep us dry, unimpressed, and bored with God and ourselves and our life. I don't know about you, but I have had times where I've just been so bored with my life. I'm like, I need to, I, I just can't do this anymore. This is boring. If this is what life in Christ is like, I don't want it. It's just boring. Because you by yourself can only stay exciting for a short period of time. How many people know that? You on your own, you're exciting, like we love you, but you can only stay exciting for a short period of time. God wants to partner with you. So I wanna just read a scripture real quickly to you, and I'm gonna give you four points. Everybody say four points. Turn to somebody else, say just four points. Out of Matthew 25, and it's the parable, I think we all know this scripture, it's the parable of the ten virgins. Someone chuckled. Yes, ten virgins. Verse one, it said, at the time my coming draws near, heaven's kingdom realm can be compared to ten maidens who took their oil lamps and went outside to meet the bridegroom and his bride. Five of them were foolish and ill-prepared. Everyone say, ill-prepared. For they took no extra oil for their lamps. Five of them were wise and sensible, for they took flasks of oil, olive oil with their lamps. And when the bridegroom didn't come, when they had expected, they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. It's kind of indicative of our culture. Then suddenly in the middle of the night, they're awakened by the shout, get up, the bridegroom is here. Come out and have an encounter with him. So all the girls got up and trimmed their lamps, but the foolish ones were running out of oil. So they said to the five wise ones, share your oil with us because our lamps are going out. We can't, they replied. We don't have enough for all of us. You'll have to go and buy some for yourself. While the five girls were out buying oil, the bridegroom appeared. Those who were ready and waiting were escorted inside with him and the wedding party to enjoy the feast. And the door was locked. Later, the five foolish girls came running up to the door and pleaded, Lord, Lord, let us in or let us come in. But he called back and said, go away. Do, do I know you? Can I assure you, I don't even know you. That is the reason you should stay, always stay awake and be alert because you don't know the day or the hour when the bridegroom will appear. Now, I was brought to this passage because it has end time uh, implication, but it has daily, everyday implication. It is this, foolishness. The Bible said five were foolish. What does foolish mean? It's one who lacks understanding of what is needed or necessary. When you're foolish, you don't know what is needed and you don't know what is necessary. And they didn't prepare, they didn't have oil in their lamps. So I wanna to talk to you about four quick things as I kind of sum this up about what I feel like the Lord is doing here and about staying oily. Number one is your priority. Number one, say priority. The difference between the virgins, the five foolish and the five wise, was a decision of priority. When something's a priority, you literally, it, 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 moves from a, it moves into a category of your life where you build everything around that thing. How many people like to go to the gym? All right, all the gym rats, hands up, hands up, hands up high. Let me see you, right? Now, if it is a priority in your world, Sir, you are getting up at 5 a.m., you are putting on your shorts, you're getting to the gym. Girl, you are getting up, you don't care, you have not even applied your makeup, you are going to the gym because it is a priority. If you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, I don't know if y'all are, okay, boyfriend and girlfriend here, I don't know, I don't know. Um, when they are a priority, you're staying up late at night. You know, you're talking to them. It's midnight. You're like, I love you. No, I love you. No, I love you, right? Late at night. It becomes a priority. You build your life around it. So my question to us is, are time in the presence of God a priority for us? Is it a priority for you? Are you building your life around it? When I grew up, my parents, 
Um, they were amazing parents. I'm the daughter of an OBGYN doctor um, who was specialized in high-risk pregnancies. He was actually a global figure. I did not know that until he passed away, how well he was known in the nations for spearheading research on preserving life in the womb. And my mom was an English as a second language teacher, but they, okay, but they prioritized us getting in the presence of God. They put us in every revival that was happening on earth. Legit. We were in Pensacola, we were in Toronto, we were in Colombia, because in their mind, the priority of the presence of God made the difference. I went to private school, I had a great education, I went to university, had a great education, but the biggest education that they wanted for me was the school of the spirit. They wanted me to know him. And that led me to a place where I began to prioritize. And when I was in first year university at the University of Toronto in Canada, a very liberal school, um, I was in res and I was there on a, um, I, was, I was trying to do like undergraduate and like my, my pathway was law uh, to my parents, but secretly it was music to me. And uh, I was there and I remember my first year of university, all my friends, they were going out, they were partying, they were going out to drink, they were doing all these different things. But I would get up in the morning and I would go down to the basement of the residence across the road where they had pianos that people could practice, all the music students. And I would go for hours and I would play the piano and I would cry out to God because I wanted him so desperately. He became a priority in my life where I said to him, you know what, before everything else happens in my day, before I go to study at the, at the library, before I go meet my friends, before I go to mess hall, before I go wherever, I am going to prioritize the presence of God because my parents started me along that way. And there's a price to pay in that. There's a price to pay in prioritizing the presence of God. There's a price to pay to become alive in Christ Jesus. If you want to be alive and passionate, you want to kick dry Christianity to the side, then you got to pay the price of investing in your time with God as a priority. And here's the kicker. You can't live off of somebody else's relationship and sacrifice. So while you're here, this corporate gathering is amazing. But here's the thing. You have to purchase oil on your own. You got to go before him on your own and allow him to change your heart. So priority, we all have a price to pay in this. Number two, consistency. Private consistency for fresh encounter. We've gotta push all of who we are into the deep end with God. You know, like, I don't swim. I don't, I don't swim, not one bit. <laughs> but how many people know, sometimes parents wanna teach their kids how to swim, they drop them in the deep end, and they're like, swim! In my mind, you're gonna drown your child, but whatever. But when you think about your relationship with God, don't, don't tiptoe in the shallow end. Students, jump into the deep end. Daily, consistently. And if you wanna stay oily, you've gotta find a rhythm of life that pushes all of who you are into the deep. You've gotta clock it out. You've gotta decide that when you wake up every morning, you're choosing Him every single morning. Because oil is consumed. Just because it's not one and done. We have a term in Canada. It's not one and done. Just because you spend time with them today doesn't mean you're going to have oil for tomorrow. It's a consistent walk with him. Everybody say consistency matters. And when you stay oily, you cultivate an atmosphere for the supernatural. I'm, always, I'm also enamored by superheroes. I'm always enamored by the people who do things, who push the limitations of their life. If you look at my life, and I don't have time to tell the whole story, but I come from um, years of childhood sexual abuse, sexual assault. I lost a baby. I lost my dad and a mentor in one year. Lots of pain, lots of loss. So when I talk about the oil of intimacy that, that literally keeps you and transforms you, I'm gonna say that in a minute, I know what that means. I know what it's like to be before the Lord as him being my only source of comfort and stability. And I'm, I'm really impressed by people who have oil for today. Like I was really impressed even being with you in worship because the Lord is pouring out his spirit here. 
in a, in a really tangible way. And that is great. But I'm so much more impressed by people like Dr. Wilson who have longevity with fire burning on their hearts. Like when I look at older people and they are fiery, I'm so impressed because life can quench your fire. So say priority. Number two, consistency. Number three, change. His presence is going to change you. Once again, this is a year where you're coming to get educated, but this is also a year where you're, some of you are going to go through inner healing. God is going to change and transform what is going on on the inside of you. This is in the place of his presence when you're oily, he makes the weak strong. He makes the roots of your life grow deep in his love. He makes your issues of identity secure in him. It is the place where you begin to dream the wildest and impossible dreams. Things that you never thought you would be able to do. Because when you are with him, you become oily and the things that limit you break off. Your insecurity goes out the window. You become who you are. Do you know who you are to be? You may think you are to be an engineer, but God may have called you to be a doctor. You may think you are called to, you know, be a tech, you know, mega tech person, but the Lord may call you to lead one of the greatest mission movements of your generation. But that comes when you sit with him and you allow your heart to be burned by the fire of his presence and he begins to make you whole and productive. I could have been a completely different person. I was on the trajectory to become, uh, be part of the entertainment industry. My background is in music, sound producing, engineering, all of that, spent a lot of studio hours. I was getting ready to do that. I was probably gonna lead an arts company in Canada, maybe with global impact, maybe, I'm not quite sure. But the Lord's like, hey, that's great and all, but as you are in the place of the oil of intimacy with me, we're gonna just chisel it down a little bit. And here I am in full-time ministry, pastoring and traveling the world, right? And the last one, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just tie this up here, is impact. Everyone say impact. impact. Being oily changes you, but it also changes those around you. When you build friendship with God, you cultivate an atmosphere of supernatural that drips from your life. You drip comfort, you drip freedom, and you drip wonder. So when, I, when I'm with the Lord, when I cultivate this friendship with God, honestly, honestly, and I, I don't say this for my own, like, whatever, but I find that I attract people. People just want to be around me. You know, I look over and the lady was sitting there on the bus inches a little closer. I'm like, ma'am, the bus is empty. You can sit over there, right? But she want to be right here. Or people will stop me in the street. I had a lady just stop me in the street where I moved like three days ago. And she stopped me in the park. I smiled at her and I was with my kids and, and friends and she came back around to me and she said, thank you for smiling at me. She said, you're the first person to do that to me. I just moved here from South Africa. So her and I stirred up a conversation. By the end of it, I had exchanged numbers. I had invited her over for a meal because in my world, when I am clothed with the anointing of God, my mandate and the mandate of the father is how free can I get you? When you encounter me, how free can I bring the freedom of Christ to your front doorstep? So when you are oily and you are rolling with those that are, those that are oily, here's the kicker. You got to roll with people that are oily. Some of my friends that are oily, we are world changers and we know it. We're like, come on. When I sit with them, my oil leaves a mark on them. Their oil leaves a mark on me and I'm excited and I'm encouraged. Because we know that our lives are not our own. We are here to serve a king and we get the joy and the laughter and the, the, the bliss of doing it together as friends. So roll with the oily ones. As you guys are about to kick into a season of, of revival, find those that will come away from this place and will sit in the halls and begin to worship him. Those that will stay up all night and pray. Those that will read the word and will talk about the word together. You are here for an education, but you are also here to grow in the things of God and in the spirit. God is clothing many of you 
with a fresh mandate to pioneer new. So I want to pray for you. I'm just going to close with this. I have a 10-year-old little girl, Shiloh. I call her Raise a Shiloh because wherever she goes, people stop and look at her. Just because she, she is beautiful, but she also carries something in God. My little go- girl just had an encounter with the Lord that started her on a trajectory of reading her word daily. She began to research martyrs around the world. She began to research, Mom, there are people groups that do not know God. That is not okay. My girl is 10. She began to talk to me about dreams that she's having the night hour with God, and he's showing things to her. And she's beginning to spend time with God. Let me tell you something. I am curating a life for her as her parent that centers around the priority with God. Consistency. Shallow, did you read your Bible today? I'm, I'm talking to her about what God is doing in her heart. Mom, she told me, Mom, I have sinned. I've done all these things, and I've done all these things that I need. I'm like, you're 10. What kind of sins do you have, right? Like you lied to your friend. Like what kind of sin, you know? Mom, I, I'm repenting. God is telling me I need to repent. And then she told me the other day, and I'll close with this. She said, Mom, God told me that I need to share my faith with my friends at school. She said, Mom, I got to tell them about Jesus. Some of them think they know Jesus because she goes to Christian school, but they really don't know him. She said, I don't care if they don't like me after this, Mom, but I need to share my faith. My little girl who says, Mom, every time you go, I want to go with you. I want to travel. Mom, can I go? She wanted to be here, but she started school yesterday, so I was like, eh, it can't happen. But I want, to, I want to see this generation that is living on planet Earth be one of the most oiliest generations that impacts our culture. I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray for you right now. Actually, I want to do this. If you, you just, you need grace to get into that place with the Lord. You need help. God, empower me to develop that lifestyle of oiliness. I want you to just stand. I just feel like a super grace to fall on many of you to go deep in the place of prayer and the place of fasting and worship. Father, I pray for all of these students right now. Just raise your hands to God. I pray for them for a fresh visitation of your your spirit. Father, I pray that you would come upon them in a powerful way. God, I pray that they would encounter you in the place of prayer and worship. God, that you would set them ablaze in their personal devotional time. That, Father, as they gather corporately, it would be like a bonfire in this place. Father, that there would be a fire that does not go out. Father, that they would have longevity in their walk with you that as they are here to get educated God that is amazing may they soar in their education but Father may they become who you've called them to be as they have dedicated their hearts in priority in consistency in being changed and in impacting do something profound in this school in the next coming weeks God pour out your spirit afresh in Jesus' name. Yeah. yeah, let's give it up for Sharon's ministry. Glad to have her in from Canada. Thank you, Sharon. Good job. Well, of course, we're going to continue in worship in a little bit, and uh, you're free to do that. We've had a number of things happening on campus We've had prayer meetings during the weekend. We've had people being prayed for, being touched. We are already in a season of revival. In many ways, we will start even more into that Friday as we start a series called Encounter. We want you to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit while you're at Oral Roberts University that changes your life forever. So turn around to someone before you leave, hug them in a real big way, and say, I want you to experience God's power. God bless you guys. Kimmy. This has been a presentation of Oral Roberts University, a world-renowned and fully accredited Christian university with more than 100 undergraduate majors and minors, as well as graduate degrees in business, education, and theology. 
If you or someone you know is thinking about college, but not sure what to expect, then visit us for one of our Quest Leadership events. Join us for this action-packed, fun-filled, spirit-empowered experience at ORU. Visit classes, attend a Golden Eagle sporting event, worship in chapel, and meet new friends. Want to advance your career but can't move to Tulsa? Then ORU has what you need with convenient online undergraduate and graduate degree programs. Don't wait. You can experience ORU's unique whole person approach to learning and graduate empowered to succeed. Visit us today at ORU.edu.